this is Lexington Green. You can see the church in the distance behind me. And it was here on April 19th, 1775, that the American Revolutionary War began. It began that morning after uh, several men had ridden uh, through the countryside from Boston, warning uh, that the British had been sent out uh, in this direction. Uh, John Hancock and Samuel Adams had kind of hunkered down here in Lexington. They were one of the targets for the 700 British soldiers that had been sent out from Boston. And that morning, over here, some 77 militia American Minutemen had gathered in the tavern behind me. When they emerged from that tavern, they lined up at the far end of the green back here, near where the church is. And it was then that the British started emerging from this direction behind me here. I believe it was the 4th and 10th Infantries who lined up in the center of the green. Uh, Pitcairn's troops went down this left side, uh, and then there were additional troops that went down on the right side. And this is where they lined up facing the American militia. So the action here in Lexington actually begins not long after midnight on April 19th. Paul Revere and others come riding into town. The reason they've come to this town is this is where Samuel Adams and John Hancock are hiding, and they are one of the targets uh, of the, the British regulars that are coming. Uh, nobody is shouting, the British are coming, the British are coming, because remember, everybody here is British too. It wouldn't have made any sense to them. That would be like me marching through the middle of my town yelling, the Americans are coming. It wouldn't have made sense. What instead he uh, they yell is the regulars are out. The regulars are out. And they're warning them that the, the British regular forces are on their way. And so uh, Paul Revere continues on. He gets up to Concord and he gets captured. And it's while he's being captured that uh, they hear gunfire back in the direction of Lexington around 1, 2 in the morning. And people think that uh, a fight has already broken out. Well, what has happened is that the town called out the militia at that point, and they had gathered around one o'clock in the morning. Well, the, the regulars were still hours away, and so they were loaded, they were ready to go, and when nothing happened, as they were dispersing, they fired off their guns because they couldn't just leave them loaded and sitting around. And so that was what they heard while Paul Revere makes his way back here to town, and Samuel Adams and John Hancock are still here, and he's like, what are you doing? Get out of here. They held a gun to my head. They're coming for you, and so they leave. And so the whole purpose of the militia who gathers out here again that morning around 4.35 o'clock was gone because the guys they were trying to buy time for were long gone by that point. But they gather, and we know the rest. The uh, other common misconception that people have is that that shot that rang out here is the shot heard around the world. That is not how it's remembered here. Up at Concord, the, the first real fighting that takes place where the Americans actually take out some British regulars, that is considered to be where the shot heard around the world was fired. So right here, this is the actual drum 
that was beat by a 19 year old named William Diamond to call the militia uh, to the green uh, on the morning of April 19, 1775. The, the decoration that you see on it was added about 100 years later, but this is the actual drum that was used that day. Up here is actually a waistcoat belonging to, I believe, to Samuel Adams. I'm going to throw my glasses on and double check that. No, John Hancock. And I was told that this was so expensive uh, that the average farmer here in Lexington could not have afforded one of these if they had saved up their entire lifetime. This is Jonathan Harrington. He was 16 years old that day and he was the last surviving uh, veteran of the battle for Lexington. He died in 1854 at the age of 96. This is the view that the American militia would have had looking uh, right there on the left. You see the tavern where I'm standing in right now, where they gathered that morning. That meeting house in the center is no longer there. The statue, the Minuteman statue outside is in about that location. And it's from just to the left, that road to the left is the direction that the British regulars would have been marching from Boston in this direction. This is the kitchen for the Buckman Tavern. This was the office right here. The wine cellar is beneath this room. So this is kind of cool here. This is actually what the view might have looked like out the window. You can see the bell. That's the bell that was rung to call the militia to the green. So imagine it's dawn, April 19th, 1775. You're a shopkeeper, a farmer. You've got the musket that you've grabbed from your own home. And you've come out here and you've lined up 77 of you facing down 10 to one odds against one of the best armies in the world. 700 British redcoats back behind me starting to line up in the green. A British major yells out telling the rebels to throw down their guns and disperse. They're actually ordered to disperse by their commander, the militia commander. No one knows what happened for sure, but at about the time that they were ordered to disperse, a shot rang out and the British unleashed several volleys into these militiamen who stood here. Eight of them were killed, nine more were wounded. Only one British redcoat was wounded, none were killed. 
the militia quickly dispersed. The uh, British troops continued on the path from here. Uh, they went down that road toward Concord, which we will visit next. Eventually, not at the time of the battle necessarily, but eventually all eight men who were killed that day here at Lexington were brought here for burial to that monument behind me. Let's take a look. Robert Monroe, Jonas Parker, Samuel Hadley, Jonathan Harrington Jr., Isaac Muzzy, Caleb Harrington, and John Brown, and Ashael Porter, the first men to die for the United States of America before it even became a nation. I'm now in Concord, and uh, if you ever get the chance, one of the most scenic, beautiful, historic drives I've ever made is the road between Lexington and Concord. Uh, just strewn throughout with uh, homes that were there at the time of the events of 1775, and even ones that came later. Homes that belonged to some of our most renowned artists and, and authors, people like Ralph Waldo Emerson, for example, Louisa May Alcott, and others. Uh, there's an incredible historic cemetery that I've visited here as well, Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. But uh, behind me is the bridge that is made famous here in Concord because it was there that for the very first time, American soldiers were ordered to fire on their British brothers. Let's go take a look. After the skirmish in Lexington, the British regulars continued on to Concord where they were looking for stored guns and ammunition supplies that they were ordered to destroy while most of it had been taken away and dispersed to other places by the time they got here. So they burned what they could and those fires got a little out of control and a lot of the militia who had gathered believed that the entire town had been torched. There were some British regulars who had been sent to guard this bridge and it was here that colonial militia and British regulars came face to face for the first time. An order was given to the militia to fire. Uh, several volleys occurred. Two British soldiers were mortally wounded or were killed. A third one was mortally wounded and it all happened here. And that was the shot heard around the world.
So imagine you are a British regular. You set out, I don't know, sometime before midnight. You've marched 18 miles in 12 hours. You've gotten into fights not once, but twice now. Unexpected probably for many of the young soldiers the first time they'd ever been in combat, probably not for the officers. But now they've been fired on, they've seen their comrades die, they're exhausted, they haven't completed either mission, they haven't captured uh, Samuel Adams and uh, John Hancock, they haven't destroyed many weapons in Concord, and now they've got 18 miles to get back to the safety of Boston. So they begin to march back. Over a thousand colonial militia have gathered by this time. They're taking pot shots at them every chance they get. They know the ground. They know the roads. They know the trees. They know the rocks they can hide behind. And so they're just picking them off one by one. The men are exhausted. They, they stumble back into Lexington. At this point, uh, there's at least some talk of possibly having to give up and surrender or at least find a place to hunker down when they run into a brigade of fresh British regulars that have come out to give them assistance. It's a godsend for these men and it's with those regulars. Now there's about 2,000 of them as they continue to make the, the march back from Lexington back uh, to Boston. By the time it's all said and done, 250 British regulars have been taken out, about 90 colonial militia, but the war was on at that point. I'd encourage you if you ever get the chance Set aside an entire day. I didn't have nearly that much time to do this, but Lexington and Concord and the battle road in between, there's so much to see, so many locations. Uh, they've really done a great job of, of making this area look like it did. There's so many buildings you can see that stood that uh, were prominent locations as a part of this battle. And you could spend the whole day just walking the road that the British regulars walked, that they marched on, that they had to stumble back down back into Boston. So check it out if you ever get the chance. I hope you've enjoyed these few highlights that I've been able to show you. Thanks for watching.